Doctors over in the US have, for the very first time, used augmented reality to help with surgery. Now, what is augmented reality? You put a headset on. It's, it's a little bit like virtual reality, except you can see the real world that you're working in as well as an overlay of a digital world. In this case, they're working on spinal surgery. But what are the implications for this for the rest of us when we get surgery in the future? We have Ray Johnson from the Queens of the Drone Age podcast and creative lead with Unyoked, John O'Seidler. Ray, exactly what was going on? Oh, this is so cool. This is one of my favourite things that's ever happened. <laughs> so this is something that was actually being used in training for quite some time. So we need to preface that they didn't just jump straight into doing this in the surgery, but surgeons used augmented reality. They had goggles on their heads that we normally use in more virtual reality, which mm. obscures what you can see. They used augmented reality to have an overlay of scans of the patient's body and issues that they were operating on on so that they could see exactly where, you know, screws needed to go and things needed to be cut out. And it worked really well for them. And I'm very excited by this. So they were working on a, on a spine, right? And so I'm just looking at the pictures here. It's basically showing that, you know, you could see the actual scan of the spine underneath what they were working on. Mm. It is kind of amazing. It's really useful. I've called a few friends who were doctors uh, in the, since I found out about this because I wanted to see if they were interested in doing it. Um, mm. And they were all saying the big issue, is, particularly when it comes to surgery, is that you're dealing with really finicky, really finite kind of movements, but also you're constantly having to move back and forward between scans. Mm. And that is like a massive issue because there's room for error. Stuff gets left behind, hopefully not that often. But like there's a fallibility issue there that can actually be solved by this and they were all for it. Everybody that I talked to was like, if this actually came off, it would be phenomenal. What are the limitations I would imagine, and tell me if I'm wrong here, is is got to be latency, right? I know latency has improved drastically in the last couple of years. Is it at a stage where it, it almost feels like you're looking at real-time two images superimposed on each other? Yeah, there's been massive advancements in the last few years. I think particularly with Microsoft's HoloLens project, that's one of the more advanced ones that we're looking at at the moment. But I think in a situation like this, when you really are looking at a stable image, you're not looking at something that is moving around. It's just something that's there as a reference, mm. as opposed to anything that's animated. You get rid of a lot of those issues that you might encounter. I think one of the problems and you know, one of the roadblocks that we are going to have here is cost. And I think being able to implement this software and hardware in surgeries everywhere is just not going to happen yeah. anytime soon. It's still going to be in that experimental space for quite a while, I think. Yeah. And it'll be in specialist wards kind of first. You'll, you'll probably see it with spinal stuff, like we were saying, and probably with cancer as well, I think will be a big one. I think in addition to implementation, you've got the fact that in, in the medical world, my dad was a doctor and we saw it quite a lot. Like even trying to get doctors to stop writing stuff down and putting it into computers so they had files on their patients. Mostly like, just because they're handwriting. <laughs> yeah, hilarious. but like it was like, a, like for a lot of them, it was like a 10, 15 year process. Like, wow. And particularly when you're talking to surgeons, like surgeons are specialists who are at the top of their field. They have a very particular way about doing things and their success rate is like a life or death thing, right? Mm. If they get it wrong, like you can have massive ramifications. So to like basically put Pokemon Go <laughs> over, <laughs> oh, over there, wow. uh, which is not what wow. you mean. Like, but it's a nice allegory, I'll <laughs> say that. That's terrible. They are. They're very resistant to com- here. Oh, it's a, it's a Pikachu. Oh, it's a Charizard. Um, do but not it is, catch it's, Pokemon during surgery. Don't do it. There will be warning signs up in there. <laughs> but in as much as it will be helpful, like to be at the level that you have to be at to be a surgeon of that quality, you are probably quite a bit older, mm. right? And so you're you're putting all this new stuff into the operating theatre. You're putting like headsets and like oh, you, it's it's a lot. And I think that that onboarding phase, you're going to have to get junior surgeons who probably aren't at the level, maybe they're assisting, but they're probably not doing the surgery. You know, you've got that sweet spot where you've got somebody who's in their 40s or 50s who's been doing it for 20 years and gets it but is still open to using that technology. Anyone younger, they're not doing the operations that you need it to be doing it on. And anyone older or more inexperienced with technology is just going to say no or they're going to be really resistant to it. Right. So for all of those reasons, this is a good 10 years away. In terms of like wide scale adoption, I think so. Right. Are there limitations that are, I mean, obviously this is very, very, very new. Like there's obviously there's cultural and there's demographic issues, but are there technical limitations that also need to be overcome in the next couple of years that are sort of already apparent from this first execution? I actually think this is a 
pretty reasonable application of augmented reality, to be honest. We're not talking about anything overly complicated here. Mm. It's essentially a, an overlay of a scan or an X-ray. It's what they'd be looking at on the wall and referencing, but it's right there in front of them. I don't think that this is something that can't be solved by technology. I think that this is a people getting used to the technology situation. All right, there is lots more of this in the podcast of Download This Show. It is available right now wherever you get your podcasts.